This is the story of the vanishing man. Perhaps you've seen him or dated him or even been him. Since the rise of social media, I have witnessed the appearance and the disappearance of the vanishing man numerous times. Based on my observations, I offer a warning. Despite his name, the vanishing man is not one man, but many. He could be the guy sitting next to you, or making your drink, or someone who was on stage earlier. And because any man can become the vanishing man, that also means any woman can date him, though she won't realize it until it's too late. Based on my field work, AKA doom scrolling on social, I found that the vanishing man generally first appears in a photo on Facebook with a woman I used to know, but no longer do. Sometimes it's a woman from my dance team in high school or a friend I met in sociology class freshman year or a roommate from my 20s. Women I once had real relationships with, but time, distance, or just different life paths have since relegated us to Facebook friends. Without social media, we would know nothing of each other's lives, but because of it, we still get brief glimpses. The vanishing man's appearance with my Facebook friend is usually notable for one of the following reasons. One, it's the first time she has ever posted a love interest publicly. Two, it's the first time she's posted a love interest in eons. Or three, last I saw, she was dating or married to somebody else. <laughs> After this initial photo, where the vanishing man's got an arm around her at a baseball game, or he's cheek to cheek with her in a selfie at a barbecue, he is everywhere. From then on, their relationship wallpapers my feed. There are photos of them snowshoeing and matching ski jackets in the frosty Colorado wilderness, attending a black tie gala, holding crystal flutes of champagne, and cuddling up after Sunday dinner with her grumpy 12-year-old cat. It looks like a happy relationship. Perhaps that's because it's been curated by her, or perhaps that's just me projecting my own relationship desires, or more likely, a mix of both. But to an outsider like me, who has found a forever relationship frustratingly elusive, it seems as though my Facebook friend has met the one. And I am happy for her in the same way I am happy for a couple who gets engaged at the table next to me in a restaurant. But I also feel a twist in my gut. I haven't had the courage to post photos of myself with someone so publicly and confidently since I was with my college sweetheart, Kyle, which was back in, well, let's just say when you still had to have a .edu email address to join Facebook. <laughs> Kyle and I dated long distance for two years, taking turns driving the flat brown freeway through the Arizona desert that separated us. That is, until the fateful Sunday night he drove down on his motorcycle to visit me for the weekend, or so I thought, only to tell me when he arrived that he wanted to break up. I was stunned. Up until that point, he had been the great love of my life. I told him I hated him and to get out of my house, and he drove the two hours back home. I cried all night and well into the next morning when I called my boss and told him between shuddering sobs, that I couldn't come to work that day. Since then, I've had a lot of relationships, some that lasted a year or two, but also plenty that didn't make it that far. The six month point is tricky because it's usually when we have to decide whether we're really serious about each other, whether liking each other has or can convert to loving one another. Several of my relationships have faltered at this point, including my most recent one. One night in late February, Robert came over under the premise that we would do the usual, make a Blue Apron for dinner and watch a movie. But when he got there, after letting me babble inanely about my day and our dinner options for 20 minutes, he abruptly told me he didn't see things going anywhere and wanted to break up. I wasn't surprised that the relationship was ending. We'd been pretty lukewarm the entire six months we'd been dating but I was completely blindsided by the fact he was pulling the trigger at that particular moment. 
In a bit of a daze, I gave him back the parking sticker for his apartment complex, and he left. Unlike my flailing six-month boyfriends, the vanishing man is steadfast. He perseveres for months, even years. This guy is dedicated. He is in it to win it. Many times, he and my Facebook friend eventually move in together. Sometimes I know this because they post about it explicitly, tagging themselves in a photo holding the keys to their new front door. Sometimes it's just the gradual, significant shift to referring to things as ours instead of mine. Moving in together is the other tricky spot for me, and it usually comes up around the one and a half to two year mark. Right before Mike and I were supposed to move in together, he got deployment orders from the Air Force. He never ultimately ended up deploying, but it delayed the move long enough for me to realize I didn't want to be in the relationship anymore. With Andrew, our relationship had already been rocky for a while. I was struggling to navigate dating someone with kids and a not-so-friendly ex-wife, and he was egging on the drama. Things finally came to a head on a trip to Cabo, and he broke up with me via text before the lease was signed. To this day, I've still never officially lived with a partner. And so when I see my Facebook friend and her man enjoying domestic bliss, I feel a bit envious that she has found her person, but also hopeful that if it can happen for her, it can happen for me too. The trick about the vanishing man is that he is almost impossible to distinguish from the one because both relationships start with so much promise and progress with so much optimism. They travel the same relationship path for months until they reach a particular fork in the road where one stays the course and the other veers off. This is where the vanishing man earns his name. He suddenly disappears from my Facebook friends page and subsequently my newsfeed. I usually don't notice it right away, but at some point that Facebook friend might cross my mind and I'll decide to check up on her. Or suddenly I'll see a post about her moving to bumfuck nowhere Idaho by herself, even though just three months ago I'd seen photos of her wedding. And that is when I discover that she did not actually find the one. Instead, she found the vanishing man. Overnight, it seems, their relationship and any evidence of it has evaporated. Usually, the worse the breakup, the more well-scrubbed the social profile. Gone are the posts and the tags and the photos. To avoid this ugly chore, I stopped sharing my relationship status on Facebook about 10 years ago. I hated confronting the dumb hope with which I'd posted about someone before we broke up and the shame I felt when I had to change my relationship status back to single. Now, I just focus on gathering up all the shit that reminds me of them and dumping it straight into the trash. <laughs> Both types of erasure serve the same purpose. It can be briefly cathartic in the midst of intense pain. When it comes to my Facebook friend, it is hard not to wonder what went wrong. If she were a real life friend going through a breakup, I would know all the issues that led up to it and the reasons why it happened. I would have some sort of explanation. But with The Vanishing Man, there is no explanation, only a sudden absence on social media. But that doesn't stop me from attempting to figure out what happened between them. I can't help but investigate the crime scene that is now his and her Facebook profiles. If I remember The Vanishing Man's first name, I'll check to see if they're still connected on Facebook, which is usually an indicator of whether things ended amicably or not. I'll scour his profile for clues. I wonder whose idea it was to end things. Does the vanishing man vanish because of his own choosing or hers? To his friends and family, is she the vanishing woman? I worry over their heartbreak simply because I have been there so many times before. That is one of the challenges of breakups. It feels as though you are the only one who has ever felt this way and it will never end. Although your friends and family can be there to support you, it is ultimately an experience you have to go through alone. And so I wonder if my Facebook friend is doing okay. I wonder how she is handling it. Is she going to the gym twice a day so her anger doesn't consume her? Drowning her sorrows in multiple bottles of Merlot every night? Wearing the same pair of sweatpants for the fourth consecutive day? 
I wonder if she'd picked out her dress yet, what she will do with the engagement ring, how much longer they have on their lease. But of course, I can't ask her any of this because we're Facebook friends, not real ones, which means it's none of my business. Kyle was both my first and last vanishing man because I stopped posting about my relationships on Facebook after that. In fact, deep in the bowels of my computer somewhere, there is still a folder called Gross where I quarantined all of the photos of Kyle and I after we broke up. <laughs> but sometimes Facebook memories will dig up something from before that breakup and I'll remember what it felt like to be in love with someone without worrying about the heartbreak that might be waiting for me on the other side. In a Facebook message Kyle sent me on September 12, 2006, while we were still dating, he wrote, was thinking about you a bunch, so I found a few things that say it better. Love reminds you that nothing else matters. Love is when you look into someone's eyes and see everything you need. When you love someone, all your saved up wishes start coming out. At 37 and single, I have a lot of saved up wishes, and I'm not sure I've ever looked into someone's eyes and seen everything I need. It's safe to say my outlook is pretty cynical at this point. After so many breakups, it's hard not to wonder if that's all I'm destined for, to try and to hope and to risk and to still ultimately end up disappointed at the end. In my real life, pretty much all my friends are married or in long-term relationships, which can feel isolating at times. But watching my Facebook friends, who are much more numerous, albeit distant, I realize there are still a lot of women out there like me, still hoping to find the one, but sometimes finding the vanishing man instead. And though I'm watching them from afar, in the darkest hours of a breakup or the loneliest hour of the night, these women keep me company though they'll never know it. This is, the <laughs> this is the story of the vanishing man, but also the woman he leaves behind. Perhaps you've seen her, or know her, or like me, been her. <laughs> 